Kuzampo and welcome to Queer Talks. I am your host, Namgizam. Queer Talks is brought to you by the Canada Embassy in Bhutan. Sitting with me today is the first trans man on the show. Um, Karma, also known as Popo. I'll be referring yeah. to you as Popo throughout the interview, I think. Yeah, um, sure. Thank you so much for being on Queer Talks. It's always, it hasn't been easy finding a trans man to come on the show, so thank you so much. Um, so Popo, tell us what you do um, first. Presently, I'm working as bartender at Tripsco, mm. and as a part-time, I use I dance yeah. and do some accounts work. And accounts work as yeah. well. That's an interesting mix-up. Are you from Thimpo? No, I'm from, actually, I'm from Shemganga. When did you come to Thimpo? Uh, since 2015, I did. 2000. This is around the same time that um, you were beginning to understand your um, gender and uh, your sexual orientation. Am I correct? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So how was it when you were back in Shemgang? I mean, when you were growing up in Shemgang, was it difficult? What was the experience like? Uh, it was quite a confusing one. Because mm. that time I didn't have a pro proper guide mm. like I do now. But that, that time it was so confusing and most irritating things. <laughs> Why was it irritating? Because <laughs> that time I used to wear Kirino mm. and I, I used to have a short hair. And uh, most of the time people come in like, you look like a grandma or some like yeah. blah, blah things. Mm. So that really makes me irritate. Mm -hmm, I see. So when did you first wear the coat? Uh, since class six or something. Mm. It was my first dance in the go and it was my first wearing a go and it was a nice feeling. <laughs> <laughs> did you wear the go after that? Was it just like, did you, because you liked the go or was it like, oh, I like what the boys are wearing and because I feel like that's why I want to wear a go or just because you felt like, oh, it was nice to wear it when you were in class six. What was your feeling? It was, uh, wearing go was like, uh, it was the real me. Mm. But wearing a kira, that time it was a uh, really irritating one and confusing one. <laughs> How did your parents react to that? Uh, first of all, they used to comment about me, about my attitude and personalities. Then soon I, I was so, so st stubborn one. <laughs> so I guess they were... They had to accept? They yeah. had to come around? Yeah. You mentioned right now you were saying now you have guidance, you have guide. Who is your guide? First of all... My friends, mm. through friends, I met Ajo Tash Chetin, Ajo Pem Doji. From Queer Voices. Yeah. Mm. Then, from that only, till now, they, ha they are guiding me. Mm -hmm. And you're feeling less confused now? I don't have any confusion now. Really? <laughs> yeah. So you really know this is who I am, right? Yeah. And now, how does your family feel about this that you've uh, embraced who you are, you found who the real you is, and you're out there? How do they feel about it? Uh, before they were not as supportive as they are now, mm. and but they are still demanding about my marriage and all. <laughs> okay. they what, keep, what did they say? They, they keep on saying, bring some girl or boys, something mm. <laughs> to show to others <laughs> that I'm officially married. Oh. And they demand like this. Oh, really? Yeah. So what do you say? What do you say to them? I say that, uh, Amma, I will bring one girl for you mm. to work for you. Say, so, Amma wants somebody to work and stay yeah. with her. <laughs> but how old are you right now? Um, now I'm officially 23. Officially 23. Yeah. You're still young. So why do your parents want you to get married so early? I don't know. I think they, they are afraid because I may land up alone. Mm. I think that, that's why. But what do you think? Do you think you'll land up alone? No, I'm not. Because <laughs> most of the time, daily, I'm the most busy one and engaged person one. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I believe I'm not alone. Mm, you're not alone. And no, you, you, I, I just have uh, many friends around me. Mm -hmm. And even there's an uh, elder who protect me and guide me and mm -hmm. gives whatever I want. So I think I'm not alone. <laughs> that's so wonderful to hear. Yeah. You were telling me how, you know, you were saying so many people in the community, you've heard stories of stigma and discrimination. And you were saying for you, it was not that difficult. You had like a really good school life as well, right? Would yeah, you share a little bit with us? Uh, since childhood, I was most energetic and active person. Mm. And most of the people around me like, used to like, like about my wives and all. Mm. And I was good in sport and culture, literature and everything. In every field, I was a good one. So I guess that's, that's why most of the teachers and friends supported me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't face any type of discrimination and all. Mm -hmm. But right now, I do face. Well, what discrimination do you face <clears throat> right now? 
uh, it was recently mm. I went to interview mm. for manager post. Mm. First, they told me, they messaged me more, mm. saying you have a well background and experience, mm. so you are selected. Look, mm. through call, they told told me that I am selected. Mm. Then after after I reaching at uh, at the office, I just they just saw my looks and personality and later they just messaged me and said, sorry, you're not selected. Oh. So I really feel discriminated about that one. Mm. And twice I tried for the overseas. Mm. And they were saying me in the message, oh, you're really a capability one and you have a good background about the hosp hosp I mean, hospitality. Yeah. yeah. So then I thought I, I will be surely selected. Mm. Then I went to overseas for the interview. Mm. Then they, they just told me that at Middle East, person like us, it doesn't ex accept it, accept us. Nah. Mm, so that's been difficult for yeah. you. And this is the first time in your life you face that, this kind of discrimination, am I right? Yeah. And how are you dealing with it? Uh, I just thought that uh, it will be fine if I doesn't go there, uh, there only. Because mm. right now in, in Bhutan, I'm happy and I'm living as I want. Mm. So I thought it will be quite good for me to stay here only. Mm. So how, I mean, I'm sure you talk to yourself and you think what you share this with your friends. So do you have a good support group for yourself? Yeah, I do. Mm. And what has, what do your friends and all share with you when you talk to them about this kind of discrimination that you face? They just told, they just boost me to try it other other agent. Mm. And they, this is that the other agent will accept me. Mm. But I didn't try because mm. my self-esteem goes low. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, and you can only take it so much, right? I mean, not one after the other. It's like yeah. bullets um, to yourself. I can, I can empathize, and I, I feel really bad, you know, that in this day, I mean, especially after we've had decriminalization happen, that this kind of discrimination still exists. I mean, okay, for the people who are sending you for employment overseas, understandable, because yes, the Middle, Middle East is definitely not yeah. LGBTIQ friendly, and I don't see you thriving there. And if I could give you personal advice, I would say, no, don't go there. I did <laughs> <Please>. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so consider other options. But I like that you said, okay, you're happy where you are. You know, yeah. you're living like how you want. And uh, I'm sure there'll be so many opportunities that come your way. But I mean, from my side, if you're Bhutanese, I think you need to uh, you need to do better than this. I think I, I get really upset when I hear stories about this. And if somebody who's watching this feels that way, I think you need to see that everyone is a human first. And I think uh, Popo is really capable, very confident, and I think you should hire Popo the next time you see, um, not based on how Popo looks, but on who <laughs> Popo is, yeah, right? And what you can do. So this is this is from our side to you, because this conversation is also about uh, raising awareness, right? And I mean, yes, there might be some people in Bhutan, we feel that everybody knows about this decriminalization, about equal rights, etc. but it appears that not everybody does. And I hope that you will take the time to understand what it is to be a trans man, what it is to be a trans woman. It in no way undermines somebody's intelligence. It in no way undermines somebody's capability. So I yeah. wish you all the best, Popo, and I hope things. Next time that happens to you, call me and I'll speak yeah, on your sure behalf. <laughs> so I'll be like, I'll just stand next to the door when you're doing the interview. I'm sure they'll be quite afraid to discriminate. Sure, it will be. No, but I'm happy to come and do this for you. So please let me know because I feel really sad when this happens, you know, to um, especially people that I know, and especially for young people like yourself who are so full of life and who want to do so much in this world, you know. You have a partner. I don't know if you want to talk about this because you told your mother that you don't have anyone in your life. I do. <laughs> Does your mother know about your partner? Right she now? She doesn't know, but she knows that I'm dating a girl. And is she happy about it? Yeah, she has to be now. <laughs> she has to be now. Um, tell us so. Tell us about your relationship. What is it like, Popo? Uh, right now, it's quite a good one, mm. as she's more supportive one, mm. and she's helping me in every way she can mm. and she's really good for me. <laughs> That's so nice to hear. Yeah. I'm glad because especially when you have these um, things that you encounter in life, right, that you didn't expect. But what do you want to do? I mean, I know you said you're doing a bit of accounting, mm. um, you're bartending as well, but what is it that you want to really do if given a choice? I doesn't have such thing right now. <laughs> not, not really, you have no I but is there something in life that you always felt like that is something you want to do? Uh, when I was in high school, I had a dream to be a lawyer. Oh, wow. <laughs> but my, my attitude and personality 
where I stay, it failed me. Mm, I see. So I still regret for that. Mm. But don't you have any plans to continue? No, I don't know. Because mm -hmm. I'm fed up with my attitude and personality. <laughs> Why are you fed up with your I think you have a great attitude. No, first, I, when I study, first, in the first semester, I say, mm, now I'll study. Mm. Then after that, I meet with friends and let's go do it like this and shit. Then I buy Kachlamda. You forget. <laughs> now nah, I just. Your priority changes. Yeah, I, it is. Mm. It, it do. Mm -hmm. And then I forget my books. <laughs> No, I mean, yeah, of course, I think when I was younger too, I wanted, I think I wanted to be a pilot or I wanted to work for the UN, but life has other plans, no? Every yeah. time. So you have siblings, right? Yeah, Uko? I do. And you are the youngest. Young, the youngest. Yeah. So how do your elder siblings treat you? I mean, when you, what were their reactions? Because so far we've talked about your mom, uh, but what about your siblings? How do they feel about uh, you? Since childhood, they were so supportive to me mm. and they are like a uh, source to me. Mm. Source for income or anything. <laughs> so still they are helping me in any kind of field. Mm. And they do know that I have came here right now. Also. Right, right. And what did they say? They say that do what you like to do. Because mm. I think they want me to be happy and all. Mm. Are you happy? Yeah, I am. Uh, that's so nice to hear. <laughs> Is there something, for instance, like you were saying when you grew up in Shemgang, did you have like role models or people who you felt like look like you, behave like you, or you didn't know? When I was Shimon, there was no such kind of person. Mm. But I did see Maram's articles and all. Mm -hmm. So from that, I, I got inspired in writing and all. Mm. So I do write a little bit mm. when I'm angry or something. Or when you're moved. Yeah, yeah so uh, Popo writes poetry and I've had the honor of reading uh, his poetry and I would like to request you to read uh, a short an excerpt from one of the poems that you just shared with me. Sure. <coughs> Shall I? Yes, please. In this mess, I met them, so captivative and exquisite, with the reflection of something similar and reassuring, who demand that I be who I am rather than what others want me to be. It is them who introduced me to myself, who put deep roots in my, in my mind to be myself. It is them who gave me the energy to come out of the lost part to take the road less taken. It is them who introduced me to myself, who put deep roots in my mind to be myself. It is them who gave me the energy to come out of the lost part, to take, to take the road less taken, and taught me to face the reality, reality to be myself. With the passing time, I believe that each individual is born with a different perspective on life. Life with a dream and desire to fulfill and to live. I'm not, I'm not different, but perspective made me to feel that. That's, I think that's a really beautiful poem. I think the poem is called Perspectives, is yeah. it? Yeah, Perspectives. Um, the whole poem uh, we will share um, on my page. You can read that. Uh, I think it's, it's really beautiful and it's moving. I hope that you keep writing, Popo. Uh, I sure. think you should write about the discrimination that you face as well because like you were saying, you read my articles yeah, and then you did. felt, oh, there's other people like me, there's somebody who sees me. And I'm sure there's so many other young people like you, you know, who, who haven't seen you, you know, for instance, like we only think about people in Timbu, like, ah, oh, Karagishi, LGBTIQ community, but then you didn't know about it in Shemgang, right? Even yeah. with the internet, right? Who knows, there might be somebody in Tongsa or elsewhere and who'll see you and be like, wow, you know, if Popo can do this, I can do this as well. What's your message then to somebody like that? My message is simple and common one. To be yourself and to accept who you are. <laughs> to fall into it. Uh, I, I think, I think, uh, I think uh, that's really nice. And I think this is what I like about Popo that uh, you see what you get. I mean, Popo didn't try to turn into somebody else just because we were doing this interview today. But I'm serious about you going to a job interview. And if you get rejected, I think this is something that we should get involved in. Yes. I think it's not okay that people should discriminate in this day and age, especially since the law no longer discriminates as well. So um, keep at it. Keep your spirit. I hope your relationship blooms into something that your mother dreams of all the time. Um, and I wish you a lot of success, Popo. Thank you. Uh, Popo. So to help you, <laughs> no, actually, uh, we appreciate you for who you are and your message. So this is a small token of appreciation from Queer Voices of Bhutan. Thank you. You can share it with your girlfriend. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.